everyone knows if you ride a bike, you spend a lot of time hunched over, you've got your, your shoulders and your, and your back, and you get up and you're all tight and everything hurts. Uh, so it's important to stretch. Everyone knows that stretching is, is critical for injury prevention, uh, for pain relief. So that's something you gotta stay on top of. The, uh, you also need to do your core work. There's, it keeps you more balanced, more stable, more efficient on the bike. Um, and just various kind of strength exercises that, the, that cycling neglects, but that helps to, to prevent injury and to, to stay more balanced and stay more efficient uh, in a race, on the bike, in a workout. Um, I used to kind of accomplish all of those with, with various different, I would do this stretching routine and this core routine, and it was kind of a mess. Uh, since, since I stopped racing, I've been working on a yoga routine that sort of accomplishes all of that. Um, now, I'm not a yoga expert, so I've recruited my friend Gabriel Benjamin, who is a yoga expert. I think it's called a yogi. Whatever he is, he knows yoga, he knows bikes, and I've, I've asked thousands of cyclists, I've done a poll of what are the pains, what are the things you want to accomplish in and off the bike workout that we can address here. Um, and I've kind of submitted those to, to Gabriel here, and he's going he's gonna to take care of it. So here's, here's a workout. This is a yoga workout that's, that's cyclist-focused, that's core-centric. Uh, the idea is this is everything that you need to do. Get this done a couple times a week, and, uh, and this will check all the boxes for your stretching and your core and, uh, and your workouts between bike rides. All right, take it away, buddy. Hey, thanks so much for having me today, Phil. Welcome, everyone. Again, my name's Gabriel Benjamin. I'm a yoga instructor based in California. I travel around the world to teach. I always take my bike with me wherever I go, and I also make a lot of videos. Today we're super excited to present to you a yoga video specifically designed for the needs of cyclists that should help with your core and stretching the tight muscles that you develop from putting hard miles in on the bike. So, we're going to need a yoga mat and I recommend having a strap as well. I've got just a sturdy scarf and that's going to work just fine. So a scarf, a belt, or a bathrobe tie will work just fine. If you don't have a mat, Use a rug, and we'll go ahead and begin with a little standing warm-up. So have the feet nice and even and parallel. Stand really tall and take a couple deep breaths. Lift the arms a little bit, the elbows bent, and twist side to side gently, keeping the knees and the hips relatively square. And come back to center and relax the arms. Continue deep breath and roll the shoulders a couple times. Do both directions, nice and smooth. And then lift the arms overhead. Hold on to the right wrist, turn the palm away, and then stretch to the left. Come back to center, switch your grip, and go to the other side. We'll take side to side movement a couple more times. And come back to center and relax the arms. Now shift all the weight onto the right foot. And open up the left leg and the arms a little bit, and perhaps you can open a little bit more for the shooting star. We're going to close the arms and legs, and then reopen, and do that a few more times. Stay very steady on that standing leg. Keep breathing. And then shift to having weight on the left leg. Shift all the weight on it. Open the arms and the legs a little bit, maybe a little bit more if you feel good. And now we're going to move the arms and legs. And this is good for the lateral core and also really good for the stabilizer muscles of the standing leg. And then we'll shift to both feet down. We're going to do some toe touches now. So if you have tighter hamstrings, try a wider stance. And you can also bend the knees. I'm going to lift the arms and touch down. It's really important to flatten the back 
So maybe hold the legs and bend the knees and lift with the flat back and bring the arms up and draw the abs in and touch down again. Flat back, remember your option of bending the knees, that will help a lot. Arms up, abs in, touch down. Hands forward, walk back to a downward dog stretch and lift the hips high. Press forward through your hands really strong and if you feel tight in the legs, let the heels be up and have the knees bend a little bit, but really emphasize lifting and straightening out the back and then eventually you can lengthen more through the legs. We'll put the knees on the floor now and roll out the back a few times. Rounding the back and lengthening the back. Nice and smooth. I'm going to move the spine kind of like a well-oiled bicycle chain, link by link. Do one more of those. And extend the spine. And point the toes. Extend the right leg and just lift about as high as the hip. Lift the left arm. Come back to center. And we'll do that on the left side. Extend the left leg. Tone around the knees, the legs very long, lift the opposite arm. And then hands down and feet down. Tuck under your toes and push into the feet, lifting the knees a little bit. If your back is sore, you can lift the knees higher. And then lower the knees. Take a breath, and then when you're ready, we'll do that again. This is called the Levitated cat, you lift the knees a bit. Keeping them close to the ground will actually strengthen your core more. But if the back doesn't feel good, lift them higher. Press strong into the hands and feet. And then go ahead and put the knees down and ease back to child stretch. In your next inhale, come back to cat. We're going to do one more cat exercise, so have a neutral back, and then extend the right leg again. Lift, but then this time, flex the right foot, and then bend the knee until the ankle is above the knee. And this will help to condition the hamstring. Go ahead and re-extend the leg, and release. Take the left leg out, lift and then flex the foot and bend the knee until the ankle is right above the knee. And breathe. Good. Release. Lower all the way down. And point the feet back. Lift the chest without using the arm strength. And then test that by lifting the hands. Notice how the chest will open a little bit more by lifting the hands. And we'll go ahead and lower. And then lifting the chest. Lift the hands. And then this time, send the arms back for a half locust. And do the best you can to roll the shoulders back as you lift. So you're toning your back, but also opening your chest. And then come down. Hands alongside chest. Next we're going to lift the legs and the chest, but leave the hands down. Try and focus on rolling the knees in a little bit, and that will take a little bit of pressure off of your sacrum and lower back. Go ahead and release. And then do that same form, lifting the chest and legs, but then this time extending the arms back. And again, rolling the shoulders back, opening the chest, rolling the knees in, taking pressure off the tailbone. Go ahead and release. Have the hands a little bit higher than the shoulders, maybe a little wide. And we're going to lift to cobra using the arms, but not too much. Just lift to a level that's comfortable for your back. And try and work the stretch into the mid-back as well as the low back. Good. 
Come on down. Use the core to lift. And tuck under the toes, push back to a dog stretch. Head down, hips high. And go ahead and lift the right leg. At first, just a little bit. And as you become more familiar with the pose, you lift the leg as high as comfortable. Still being able to breathe, but also enjoying creating muscle tone and stretching deeper. Go ahead and set the foot down. And let's do that on the left side. Keep pressing strong through the hands. Lift the leg just to the right level for your body. And set the feet down. Feet back a little bit. Come forward to a plank position and have the shoulders right above the wrists. Have a flat back or a little bit of a rounded position and legs very strong. Put the knees down slow. Keep the back flat. Lift the knees back up and do that a couple more times. Trying to really feel the lower abdominal muscles. Last round, knees come down, and we're gonna press the ribs to the right, and then to the left. One more time, each side. And then next, we're gonna place the elbows where the hands previously were. It's good to have the hands beyond the mat, and you bring the feet to the very end of the mat, and you have the hips shoulder level. This is plank on the elbows. Try and part the shoulder blades, press strong into the feet, press back into the heels, tuck the tailbone, and you make the low abdomen strong by tucking the tailbone. It's not just good for your abdominals, it's really good for the health of your lower back. And we'll set the thighs down now. Maybe take the arms and hands a little bit wider. This is called the Sphinx Stretch. We're really wanting to work on lifting and opening up in the sternum and the chest. Don't lift the head too much, just neutral amount, but do have a steady gaze and a steady breath. This is a great posture for helping to reverse the negative effects of slouching over the bars. Place the left arm under the forehead and stretch the right thigh. Have the heel a little bit wider than the glute so that the thigh creates an internal rotation which should ease up pressure on the sacrum. And that also allows you for more space to eventually go deeper. But don't force the stretch, just go to the right level for you and breathe. breath and we'll go ahead and release and take the other side nice deep stretch again the heel goes a little wider than the glute enjoying that light internal rotation of the femur which is good for the sacrum and this is just a really nice pose to take the heaviness out of the legs after a long day in the saddle Very good, use your exhale to release that. Hands alongside the chest and lift and ease back to a child. You can fold your arms under your head. It's a really nice way to help relax the neck and the shoulders.
Next, we're going to come on up to a sitting or kneeling position. So you can be more lifted if your knees are sore. Take a big step up with the right foot. Maybe step twice if you need. You want to be in a long stride and you want your knee right above the ankle, no further forward. Work on lifting your chest. And then take the right hand to the thigh and push into the hand a little bit to open the chest more. Nice twist to the right side. Deep breath. And go ahead and come on down. Lengthen the back leg. And if you can, with balance, hold the thigh, stand up. If you need to, you can just keep holding the thigh. Otherwise, you're going to bring the left arm up and take a little bit of a side bend to the right. And that will help you to go really deep into those hip flexor muscles. Good. Come on back to center. Place the hands down. Put the back knee down. And then let's go ahead and switch the sides. Glide the foot back. You can use the hand to help the other leg step up really long. It's okay to be shorter if you're still working on your flexibility. You just want to make sure that the knee is right above the ankle and not beyond it. So go ahead and work on lifting the chest and then taking the hand on the thigh and taking that nice twist to the left. leg, maybe cinch in a little bit, use the hands on the thigh to lift, and either stay like this, keep the back heel centered if you can, to deepen, lift the right arm, and then stretch over to the left. Deep breath, enjoy that deep release in the legs, steady your balance. Come on back to center, hands down, back knee down, just take a moment to feel long in the spine, and then we'll glide back to child's pose. Next we're going to go ahead and adjust to sitting, so lift up and sit cross-legged or sit any way that feels really good for you, good on your knees. We're going to take our strap and take the arms overhead. Go back a little bit and then come forward and continue to move, slowly loosening up the chest and shoulders. Still breathing, very deep. And when you're ready, taking the arms back, stretching open in the chest, and holding. Nice. Release that stretch, but keep your strap close at hand for the reclined work, and we're going to go ahead and lay down on our back now. So, <clears throat> lay on back, knees to chest, and then take the left foot to the ground, place the right ankle on the left thigh, and work the right knee away. You can use your hand to push on the knee. If this is a big stretch already, that's all you need to do. Otherwise, you're going to bring the left leg in, hold the hamstring or the shin, flex the right foot a little bit, and try and continue to lengthen the neck while working the shoulder blades and the hips down. It's a great stretch to release the glute. It helps with 
back pain and sciatic pain as well. And go ahead and release. Left foot to the ground, then the right. And take the other side. Left leg, cradle, ankles flexed a little bit. You could just push on the knee and that might be enough of a stretch. Otherwise, taking right leg in, hold the hamstring or the shin, and enjoy a deep breath. Release right foot down, then the left, and take knees to chest. And open the arms a little bit. Take the legs to the left for a nice little twist. You can put your arm under the leg if you want to prevent overstretching. And if it feels good to add leverage, put your opposite hand to the top thigh and keep the shoulder blades grounded on both sides. Go ahead and come on back to center, knees to chest. Let's take that twist on the opposite side. We'll open up the arms a bit, take the legs to the opposite side. Either use your arm under the leg or on the top leg and enjoy the nice release through the hips and the spine. And you keep your shoulder blade down on the left side. You really help to work the stretch into the mid and the upper back as well. So that's nice. back to center, knees to chest, and then put the left foot on the floor, take your strap right over the ball of the right foot, lift the leg and draw the toes down as you lift up through the heel. If you feel really tight, you can have the top leg bent, but if you're able to lengthen first the top leg and then potentially the bottom leg, and this is a nice way to increase the stretch in the legs and also lengthen the spine. Work the toes down, that helps to stretch the Achilles and the calf as well. Pull with the hands a little bit, but mainly keep the shoulders and neck relaxed. Don't overstretch. Just breathe. Go ahead and release that nice stretch. Right foot comes to ground and lift the left leg. Remember your options. You can have the knee bent a little bit. You can have the leg straight. And if it feels good to lengthen the bottom leg, then that's great. So this is an ideal hamstring stretch for cyclists because it keeps the low back flat. And it's also an inversion for the leg. So it helps you to flush out lactic after a hard day. Enjoy using just the right amount of leverage. Remember there's no KOMs for stretching. Go to just the right level for your body and breathe. And release that stretch. Lay down for just a moment, take an extra breath, and notice how you feel through the legs, and the spine, and the hips. You can stay here longer if you like. Otherwise, we'll bring the knees back into chest. Slowly come on up. And 
will conclude today's session. So thank you so much for joining us. I hope you continue to use this video or do similar type of practices. It will help you to enjoy more health and more good experiences while doing what you love the most, riding your bike. And thanks so much for Phil for being a really fun and inclusive member of the yoga community and just a great ambassador to the sport. It's a total privilege to be here and I really look forward to the next time. Bye everybody. All right, I hope you enjoyed that nice yoga class. Uh, that was a free yoga class if you enjoyed it. I urge you to, to take the $20 that you would have spent on your real yoga class and uh, donate to No Get Hungry. There's a link in the profile there. Um, that's what we're doing this for. So thank you. Thanks, Gabriel. And uh, check out Gabriel's channel. He's got a bunch more content, uh, more specific stuff. If you want to get deeper into the yoga aspect. So thank you. See you next time.